I play a ton of Metroidvanias. In fact, it's probably been my most played genre of all time. The thing I like the most about Metroidvanias is the fact that they're very gameplay focused. Metroidvanias only exist due to their explicit gameplay style. And of course, Metroidvanias live and die by the gameplay. No matter how good the story, music, and graphics are, gameplay is still king here. Whether you take the developer intended path or emergent gameplay in the form of sequence breaking. And today we have the Metroidvania Fusion, a third party event hosted on Steam. It's essentially a celebration of all Metroidvanias, whether upcoming, currently available, or classics. Unlike most events, this isn't really focused on demos. Yes, games do have demos here, and yes, some upcoming games do have demos available, but it's not a core focus, unlike, say, the Steam Next Fest. So today, we're gonna talk about five Metroidvanias you should buy today, based on my own recommendations and nothing else, really. Probably one of my favorite modern Metroidvanias is a game called Rusted Moss. It's an unusual Metroidvania in which many of your movement abilities are tied explicitly to using your grappling abilities. Some Metroidvanias do feature grappling hooks, but they're somewhat limited in their use. But Rusted Moss, the entire game is designed around using your grappling hook. The grappling hook also has an elastic character meaning that essentially you can have insane movement techs right from the get-go. It's a metroidvania that abandons most of your typical movement abilities in exchange for making grappling the sole and most exhilarating way to move around in a metroidvania. If you had to pick one game from this video, I would recommend getting this game. The next game I would pick is Rabby Ribby. It was between this and its somewhat spiritual successor Tevi, and I decided to go with Rabby Ribby because, well, I just feel like it's a better representation of what the Metroidvania genre is all about. Tevi is still an excellent game though, so if you have time to get both of those games, I would recommend getting it as well. But essentially, Rabby Ribby is a bullet hell Metroidvania. The highlights of this game are obviously the boss battles, but the platforming isn't too shabby either. The one real turnoff for some people is the anime art, and unfortunately for those people, they're missing out. The next Metroidvania I want to recommend is Salt and Sanctuary. It leans more on the whole 2D Dark Souls aesthetic. But even with its Souls-like influence, this is more of a true 2D Metroidvania. There's a lot of armor, weapons, and skills to learn. And befitting of most Souls, like it is quite difficult. Next up is Bloodstained, Ritual of the Night. It's a true spiritual successor to the Metroidvania Castlevania titles. Think Symphony of the Night or Aria of Sorrow. The main game is quite extensive, and there's a lot of bosses, enemies, and weapons and equipment to use. Lots of abilities too. There's also multiple different modes of play even after you beat the game. All in all, it's a fantastic game that was kickstarted many, many years ago. And of course, last but certainly not least is Ender Lilies, Quietest of the Nights. I kind of have a soft spot for this game because it's the first game that I played to 100% on my Steam Deck when I first got it. It's a Metroidvania that leans more into Souls-like-ish themes, but it truly is a Metroidvania through and through. I suppose the only real issue is that at times the game can be quite unforgiving, but it's not so unforgiving that it's unbeatable. Also, the graphics and art style is just top notch in this game. Definitely give it a shot. Now let's talk future Metroidvanias that I'm looking forward to, the first of which is Ender Magnolia, Bloom in the Mist. Whether it's a spiritual successor or a true sequel to Ender Lilies, it's made by the same developers and it features a very similar game style, but I am quite curious as to how this ties into Ender Lilies as a whole. What about its place in the story? Well, I think we're about to find that out pretty soon because the game comes out in early access this month. The full game will be released sometime this year. Next up is a game that was literally announced yesterday as of the making of this video. Abyss X Zero. Abyss X Zero is made by the same developers that made Unsighted, and Unsighted is a very good game. I don't know if it's necessarily a Metroidvania, but it is very good nonetheless. Unlike most Metroidvanias, this one's a 3D third-person Metroidvania. It's got both melee combat and third-person shooter mechanics, which sounds pretty exciting all things considered. You know what this game reminds me of? Mega Man Legends. I think Mega Man Legends art style aged a lot better than most other PS1 games. Anyways, this Metroidvania looks interesting, and it's a rare 3D Metroidvania, and there aren't a whole lot of those, to be honest. Next up is Blade Chimera. It's a game developed by Team Ladybug, that one team behind Toho Luna Knights and Record of Lotus War, Deedly in Wonder Labyrinth. 
It's a metroidvania with a more cyberpunk aesthetic, and I gotta say, it looks right up my alley. I really want to give the game a shot, but I don't know when this game is supposed to release. I hope it releases sometime soon though. Next up is a game called Altered Alma. It's another cyberpunk 2D metroidvania, but this one looks like it has even greater emphasis on combat, and it looks more visceral overall. The game looks quite violent, but I do like the art style. I do want to check this game out, and I'd like to see what the game has to offer. And the last game I want to talk about is a game called Turbo Kid. It might be the most unique metroidvania on this list. It's like Trials and a metroidvania had a baby. Actually, there's kind of a game like that already, but I haven't played that for myself. But this one looks very promising as well. Combining both on-foot gameplay with biking gameplay, these sorts of games have the ability to flip the metroidvania genre on its head by making the main mode of transportation a non-standard mode of transportation. Meaning that in the end, the game should be substantially different compared compared to its peers, which is very exciting in a genre full of established conventions. This game is called Turbo Kid, and it sounds like a metroidvania I have to try for myself. So I think that covers it for the metroidvania video. Yes, I've played more than 5 metroidvanias and I'm excited for way more than 5 new metroidvanias. But of course, in the interest of time, I had to shorten this list. As for whether or not any of these games will work on Steam Deck, I have no reason to believe that they won't work on Steam Deck. Outside of some Proton fix that would have to be fixed, I don't think there will be any compatibility issues with the games on Steam Deck. If they work on Steam Deck, I firmly believe they'll perform very well on Steam Deck as well. But this is just one man's opinion. If you have any other metroid Venus you'd be interested in, just let me know down below and maybe I'll check them out when they release too. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.